What is going on everyone? In this video, we're going to be breaking down a really cool OpenCV computer vision project and that is an iBlink password. You might be asking, what the heck is an iBlink password? Well, what is a regular password, right? You got your keyboard here, you type in a bunch of junk, you get unlocked, you get where you need to go. Well, for an iBlink password, all you need to do is have a camera looking at your face and blink in the appropriate way and then you can get unlocked and get to where you need to go. And then, what good is having an iBlink password if you're not actually protecting it with anything, right? So, if you'll turn your attention over that way, I have created this iBlink safe here. It's all 3D printed and it's powered by a Raspberry Pi and it's running this iBlink password code. And here, it's tied to a lock, so if it detects the correct iBlink password through the camera looking at your face, it'll unlock this lock here, and you'll be able to open the door. So we're going to try and bust out some very valuable caffeine from this iBlink safe. Close that door, and we'll see if we can get that caffeine out of there. So, this video is going to be valuable to you, whether you just want to, you know, Get the code, see how it works, so you can sort of use it for your own application with ideas in your own head. I'll show you where you can get the code and break down how it works. And then after that, I'll show you how this iBlink safe works and how you can get to start building one of your own if, if you're interested in doing that. So, let's get to it. Alright, so before progressing any farther, I thought I'd show you the code in action. So this is the script itself, and here you can see the password. So a normal password, you know, could be any combination of characters. With the iBlink password, it can be either an L, an R, or a B. An L is representative of the left eye being closed, an R would be right eye being closed, and the B would be both eyes being closed. All right, so let's run this script and see if we can match the password. I'm running the Python script now. All right, so the script is now running. There's a lot going on here. I'll try and break it down for you. So the green square is for the right eye, and you'll notice that the green square stays there even if the eye is closed. All right, and the blue square is for the left eye, and same thing, it, it stays there even when the eye is closed. But the white squares disappear when you close your eyes. So... The white squares detect open eyes, and the green and blue squares just detect eyes in general. All right, so now let's direct our attention to the output of the script, the text output. And you'll see here, you can see the current detected states of your eyes. So the left and right eye are detected, and they're both open. So that means you have the white squares on them. So if we close the right eye, okay, so now it says right eye closed. But we still haven't added the R to our current I state sequence. So you have to open your eye again to lock in the attempted digit. So if we want to get an L right here, we'd have to close our left eye. See that white square disappears. And then we'll open our eye again. And now we've added an L. And then if you've messed up and you want to restart your password, just block out the camera output. And if your eyes aren't detected, it'll wipe out your current I blink password and now we're starting with a clean slate so let's try and match the password that the script is currently using and I think that was left eye closed left eye closed right eye closed right eye closed and then both eyes closed all right so we made it in open sesame so that's how the script works you can change this password to anything you want so now that we sort of know how it works, I'll show you where you can download the code from and how you can get it running on a Windows machine. Even though I'm only showing you how to set up and run the code on a Windows machine, you should be able to run this iBlink password code on any operating system. All right, so now I'm gonna walk you through how to get this code running on a Windows machine. We're, gonna use, we're going to be using Anaconda, so we'll go to anaconda.com distribution and we'll click on the download. And we're gonna want the Python 3.7 version, so click on this most likely 64-bit graphical installer. And then go ahead and run that installer. 
very simple process just you know click through all the I agrees all this stuff and I would go ahead and click the add anaconda to my path environment variable if you haven't already set up Python on your machine and then click install all right and then we'll hop on over to github to grab the iBlink password code and that is under github.com slash drone dojo slash iBlink password and it's very simple repository right now all we're gonna do is click clone or download and then we'll download the zip file and we'll navigate to our download directory and let's go ahead and unzip that repository we just downloaded and then we'll see that we have the repo on our local machine now alright so that's all set and ready to go but we have a dependency problem there's a bunch of dependencies that you need in able to run OpenCV and some of the other stuff that are required to run this script and Anaconda allows us to easily import the dependencies that we need so I'm gonna show you how to do that for Windows alright so let's type in anaconda prompt and this anaconda prompt should now be installed so we'll pull that up and then we're going to navigate to the github repository that we just downloaded and unzipped so for me that was under the downloads directory I'm gonna go there I'm gonna go to iBlink password master see where we're at and then have to go into iBlink password master again so again if you're on a Windows machine you'll be able to resolve all of the dependencies by going to anaconda env directory so let's go in there anaconda env and then let's look at the contents of this file so in this env underscore four underscore windows dot yml it holds all the dependencies that we need to run the iBlink code so how do we create that environment with anaconda okay so from this anaconda env directory we're, we're going to type conda env create minus f and then the name of that file we'll go ahead and type that and it should start creating the environment that holds all of the dependencies that we need to run this iBlink password And that'll take a little bit of time. It has to fetch a lot of different dependencies. So to do that, you just type conda activate iBlink password. And now we're in the iBlink password. And then make sure we're in the directory that has the iBlink password.py script. Just type dir for directory, and you'll, you'll be able to see the contents of that folder. That folder is going to be the root directory of our repository, iBlink password master. So from here, we're going to launch our IDE called Jupyter Lab, which is really cool. It's a internet browser based IDE that we'll be able to view our code from and also run the code from. So that we'll type Jupyter Lab from again the directory that has the iBlink password.py script in it and it should launch a browser here alright here we are and this is Jupyter Lab so we'll go to file we're gonna access a new terminal so this terminal so this environment we're in right now is running with all of the dependencies from that iBlink password environment that we just created so let's type Python and then the name of the iBlink password script and if everything went smoothly this script should be able to run without any hiccups or problems all right there we go it should launch a little there we go a little terminal and it'll pull your webcam up make sure you have a webcam plugged in and to exit this script all you have to do is hit the Q button lowercase Q so if you got the code running on your machine congratulations you're good to go and also from Jupyter Lab, you can pull up the double click on the iBlink password.py script and go through all of the contents of the script if you have any questions. All right, so we've done a lot to this point. You know, we've shown you how the code works from a high level, shown you where you can get the code and how you can run it on your local desktop Windows machine. Now it's time to put that code into an actual practical application and 
use that eye blink safe and see if we can unlock the door to get that sweet, sweet caffeine. For time, there she is in all of her glory. And all the walls and stuff, this is all 3D printed. And here's the camera out in front and the LCD and then all the fun stuff in the back. So let's unlock that door. All right, you heard that little unlocking sound, so now you can open up the door. We can get our, our treasure, our prize. Unlock the door. Now it's back to being locked. All right, so that's how that bad boy works. Unfortunately, I'm sort of running out of time in this video to show you how to create this from complete scratch. It would take a while. But I'm gonna drop a link to a written tutorial that'll show you how to make an iBlink safe from scratch if you're interested in doing that. I'm gonna show you where you can find the STL files to print off all the parts you'll need, as well as the hardware parts you'll need to buy, like the Raspberry Pi, obviously, the solenoid lock, the relay, a couple other things, the Pi Cam, the LCD. I'll have a complete list of all the hardware you need. And then we'll get into how to get the dependencies working on your Raspberry Pi. A big pain point for getting OpenCV working on a Linux environment is getting the dependencies right. So I'll walk you through how to get all those dependencies and run OpenCV on your Raspberry Pi. And then, I mean, this code you just ran on your desktop computer, it runs exactly the same on the Raspberry Pi. If you do want to go ahead and build one of these iBlink safes and you come across any questions, go ahead and you know let me know. Drop a comment in the YouTube channel or any other method you might think of for getting a hold of me. And uh, I'll yeah, I'll be sure to answer any questions that come across. And also, if you just end up using the code itself and use it in your own real life practical application, shoot me a message. I'd like to see how other people are using this iBlink password code. If you liked everything you just saw and you want to help support me and my channel, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the Drone Dojo YouTube channel.